Hey everyone! In this video, you'll learn all about particle systems and simulating physics. Smoke is fun and easy to simulate. We'll start with a single smoke particle that moves upwards on a line. Let's generate new particles at regular intervals. Now we'll make the smoke fan out a bit by randomly changing the direction of each particle's line. Let's hide the lines and draw the particles as semi-transparent. We can make it look better by replacing the circle particle shape with a Gaussian function. This gives a smoother, more wispy smoke look. Finally, we'll make the intensity decay over time. Cool. This looks pretty smoke-like. All right. Now let's suppose we want our smoke to blow with the wind. This is harder. We can't just move particles on straight lines. Instead, we'll simulate physics. How does that work? We need an equation that determines the position, p of t, of each particle over time. Here's that equation. It's the initial position p of zero, plus the integral of velocity over time. That may look complicated, but there's a pretty simple intuition. Let's plot the velocity of the particle over time like this. Here I'm showing me only one component of the velocity, the y component, as it's easier to visualize. The others are similar. The integral is the area under that curve. Now, suppose the velocity is constant. Then the area under the curve is just v times t. That's the equation of a line. And that's why moving particles along straight lines produces a nice smoke effect. It's equivalent to performing a simple physics simulation. But now suppose the velocity changes over time, due, for example, to changing wind directions. It's harder to compute the area under this curve. One approach is to evaluate the curve at a few points and use a piecewise constant approximation for the integral. In fact, we'll use a shifted version. It has the same area, but it's offset a bit. So how does this work? Well, suppose we've already approximated p of t, and we want to compute the next time step, the area inside this orange box. Suppose the width of the box is delta, and the height is v of t. So the area is delta times v of t. We just derived a simple update equation. This is called an Euler update. It's a simple way to perform integration. And here's the version where p and v are 3D vectors. Okay, let's use this to blow some smoke. We'll start by setting the velocity straight up. So the Euler update will look like this. Now, if we add some wind blowing to the right, the velocities combine to get a new update. And changing the Euler update direction simulates varying the wind direction. This is all really easy to implement. Let's put all the particle positions into a vector and all the velocities into another vector. Now we can do the Euler update just by adding vectors together. In other words, you can update all of the particles together in one easy step. This is called a particle system. If your vectors are 3D, it looks like this. You can use the same approach to simulate a bouncing ball. The motion of the ball is determined by gravity, which defines the ball's acceleration. The integral of acceleration is velocity, and the integral of velocity is position. You can implement this with a pair of Euler updates. In each time step, you first update position, and then velocity. And that's all there is to it. Whoops, where did the ball go? Ah, we forgot to implement collisions we need to detect when a ball collides with a wall. Our wall can be any planar surface. Given a point P on the plane and the surface normal N, we compute the sine distance D of N from the surface to the center of the ball using this formula. Then the collision occurs when D of N equals R, the radius of the ball. You usually won't detect the collision until the next time step when it's already slightly penetrated the surface. So you'll want to use this formula instead. 
and you can move the ball back to the surface by adding this vector d to the ball's position. When the ball hits the wall, its velocity changes. Specifically, the component of velocity that is perpendicular to the wall gets inverted. To make this happen, you decompose the velocity into two components. V of n is perpendicular to the surface, and V of t is parallel or tangent to the surface. They are given by these formulas. You then invert V of n and add V of t to get the reflected velocity. This makes it behave like a Super Bowl. It bounces back to the same place you dropped it from. Most balls lose a bit of energy with each bounce. You can simulate this by multiplying the inverted velocity by a value between 0 and 1. It lets you control how bouncy your ball is. Another factor you can control is friction. Without friction, a ball will just keep rolling. You can add friction by multiplying the tangential component of the velocity by a scale factor between 0 and 1. Smaller values make it come to a stop sooner. Stay tuned for part 2, where we make balls bounce into baskets, simulate springs, and more.